What is security? Security is usually an assurance of a situation or a process. However, the methods and effects of security can vary widely. Let's explore some scenarios. The simplest scenario is when security becomes its own goal. This is the common start and end of security. We all begin with feelings, familiarity, comfort. We are secure because our loved ones and surroundings make us feel secure. At first, we don't need any more. In essence, we feel secure because we feel secure. Security that is based on emotional assurance is self-sustaining. It doesn't need to be anchored in reality. It just is. It is a positive feedback loop, a powerful one. Even though emotional security may not be anchored in reality, it is still real. It affects the real world. It affects us. And the need for emotional security is real. This need is a source of power, of drive. It can be used to motivate us to survive and prosper in an adverse situation. This need can also be used to motivate us to blindness and the sloth. A security professional must learn how to use, wisely use and be used by emotional security. The next most common security situation is when security is an assurance that nothing has changed. If you ask Google what is security, their answer is the state of being free from danger or threat. And Wikipedia has a similar answer. Security is the degree of resistance to or protection from harm. These definitions describe a model of security where security becomes an assurance of isolation, of protection, of unchanging stasis. In this model, security is an assurance that nothing can damage or harm you, that nothing will change. This model of security is difficult to use if you are fully engaged with the present, but it is useful if your attention is on the past. For example, I've used the assurance of stasis and isolation to achieve security when I was handling forensic or log data. I have also used the security of isolation when my children were babies. Isolation is a good security model when you can gather everything you want, everything you need in one place and exist independent of the world. The next security scenario is when security is an assurance of control. Dan Gear is one of the highly respected leaders in the cybersecurity community. Gear has a lifetime of experience accomplishment with government and critical civilian enterprises. If you ask Gear to define security, he says, security is about the absence of surprises that can't be mitigated. Dr. Gear is implying that security occurs when surprises are anticipated, controlled, and mitigated. In the control model of security, you achieve security and improve security by improving your awareness and control over anything that might affect you. Total awareness and control of surprise is a valid model of security. A difficult and expensive model of security. But I've used it when I had lots of understanding, lots of resources, and lots of control. It works best in a slowly changing environment. For example, I used this model when my children were small. I knew that they needed changes. 
but I attempted to anticipate and control those changes. Our fourth security scenario is the security of goals. I've worked with many project leaders, project managers, and project-oriented CIOs. These people are always trying to achieve meaningful change in an unpredictable world of budgets, deadlines, and limited control. A project manager has a unique view of security. Once you get them to open up, they say they have security when, when I have a meaningful assurance that my most important goals are going to happen on time and close to budget. I've worked with many system administrators. They have an even more focused view on security. To a good sysadmin, security is maintaining the confidentiality, integrity, and availability of IT systems and business data. Assuring progress toward precisely focused goals is a powerful tool and is a powerful security model. This is probably the best model for a dynamic, uncertain environment. When you use the focused goal model of security, you always start out with a number of important goals, but then the world quickly beats you down and forces you to focus on one or two of your most critical goals. You don't cr completely give up on your secondary goals, but you decide that they may be sacrificed to achieve the primary goals. The focused goal security model has one powerful advantage over the other models of security. In a dynamic environment, a flexible, capable team can work with that environment, can work with the changes to harvest and implement new valuable secondary goals as rapidly as the old ones must be sacrificed. Once you are expert in sailing the winds of change, you can emerge from the struggle succeeding in one or two of your most critical goals and with a host of valuable secondary goals trailing behind. I have used the security model of focused goals many times in my career. It is the best one to use during rapid change or when you face determined, capable opponents. And it's the only model of security that sort of worked as my children became teenagers. So is one of these four security models always best and the rest are poor substitutes? Or could it be that security changes its nature, its practice from time to time and place to place? The important question here is, what does security mean to you? And perhaps also important, what will security mean to your boss? <laughs>